Hello guys and welcome, CPP Dev here. In this video we are going to discuss a bit about the simplest container that the STL has to provide, the standard array. Before starting I want to remind you that this series is mostly based on the book called Mastering the C++17 STL which you can find in the description below so don't forget to check it out. Also, if you like the content that I make and don't wanna miss any new videos related to C++, make sure you subscribe and leave a like to the videos that you enjoyed. Now that we got this out of our way, let's get right into it. The simplest standard container class is the STD array, which behaves like a built-in C style array. As all of the standard containers, this is a template class that has two parameters. The first template parameter to std array indicates the type of the array elements and the second template parameter indicates the number of elements in the array. This is one of the very few places in the standard library where a template parameter is an integer value instead of the name of the type. Defining and initializing the std array is as simple as initializing the built-in array type, the cstyle array and it will have the same properties for the elements, meaning that all of its elements will be stored in a contiguous memory zone. First, a little bit about the C-style arrays. The normal C-style arrays being part of the core language do not provide any built-in operations that will take linear time to run. C-style arrays let you index into them with the brackets operator and compare their addresses since these operations can be done in constant time, but if you want to assign the entire contents of one C-style array to another or compare the contents of two arrays, you will find that you can do it straightforwardly. You will have to use some of the standard algorithms such as std copy or std equal. std swap being an algorithm already does work for C-style arrays and to be honest it would be a shame if it didn't work. So, if we have a simple C-style array of four string elements, we can access the elements using the brackets operator given that we already know the index of the element. Size function is not available. The size can be checked by using standard algorithms, either std size or std distance, for example. Copying uh, via the equal operator isn't supported. We can use std copy. Swapping is supported in linear time of course using the std swap. Comparison isn't supported. Standard algorithm is needed. Even more so the equality operator does the wrong thing. Wrong in the sense that it doesn't do what we intend to do. It compares the addresses. We can use std equal for example for this operation. So the built-in C-style array, while it's good in terms of resources, it doesn't provide you any built-in operations that would take linear time to run. In order for those operations to be executed, you would need to make use of the standard algorithms. Now for the std array, the story is a bit different. The std array behaves just like a c-style array but with more syntactic sugar. It offers member functions such as begin, end, which will return an iterator to the first or last element respectively and it overloads the assignment operator, the equality operator and the lower than relational operator to do the natural things. All of these operations still take time linear in the size of the array because they have to walk through the array copying or swapping or comparing each inv individual element one at a time. One gripe about std array which you will see recurring for a few of these standard container classes is that when you construct an std array with an initializer list inside of set of curly braces you actually need to write two sets of curly braces. That's one set for the outer object of the std array type and another set for the inner data member of type t with n elements. This is a bit annoying at first but the double brace syntax will quickly become second nature when, once you have used it a few times. Having a simple std array of four string elements 
we can still access the elements using the brackets operator given that we know the index but now we have begin, end and size functions already provided which we can use the copying via the assignment operator is supported in linear time swapping is also supported in linear time the equality operator does the natural thing value comparison the arrays have different addresses but still compares uh, lexicographically equal the relational operators are also supported for the std array type one other benefit of the std array is that you can return one from a function which you can't do with c-style arrays for example taking a cross product function you can't do this and just return a c-style array but you can change your implementation and return an std array because std array has a copy constructor and a copy assignment operator you can also store them into other types of standard containers for example having an std vector of std arrays with three elements is fine whereas declaring std vector of a c style array with three elements wouldn't work the std array holds its elements inside itself therefore size of std array of int type with 100 elements is equal to the size of a c style array of type int with 100 elements which is equal to 100 times size of integer don't make the mistake of trying to place a gigantic array on the stack as a local variable having a c style in integer array of 1 million elements will take up 4 megabytes of stack space enough to blow your stack and cause a segmentation fault changing it into a c++ std array will not fix the problem Working with gigantic arrays is a job for the next container to be presented on the series, the std vector. Now that you know what an std array is and how it compares to a simple c style array, the biggest question should be when to use the std array. Let's take a look into this. Basically, if you compare it with a simple c style array as we did earlier, the most important advantage is the so called ease of use. So when you need a C-style array, you can check why you need it and how you will use it and decide if it's better to use STD array instead. You would want to use STD array instead of the C-style array if you have multiple operations that have to be done on it that are not provided by the core C-style array. That would be the simple case when comparing it with C-style arrays. As for when to use it in general, for example, instead of other containers such as std vector, the answer is a little bit different. In short, you should use std array when you know the number of elements from the start and that number will not be modified. This is because, for example, if you are going to use an std vector that will add some overhead to your values and you don't need that when you can use the std array instead also you should use it if you have fixed content for the container for example you only need three elements and you know these elements from the start maybe you have some logic exception cases in your code that you know from the start so it's simple to use std array one more advantage of using std array instead of other containers such as std vector is that you can make it for example a constant expression which means that it will be evaluated at compile time which is not possible for std vector however if for example you find yourself returning arrays from functions or storing arrays in containers very often you should consider whether std array is really the right abstraction for your purposes would it be more appropriate to wrap that array up into some kind of class type? Since we already have it, let's use the cross product example. 
For this example, it turns out to be an extremely good idea to encapsulate our array of three integers in a class type instead of std array. Not only does this allow us to name the members x, y and z, but we can also initialize objects of the vec3 class type more easily. No second pair of curly braces. And perhaps more importantly, for our future sanity, we can avoid defining the comparison operator such as the lower than operator, which don't actually make sense for our mathematically domain. Using std array, we have to deal with the fact that the array formed from elements 1, 2 and 3 compares less than the array formed from elements 1, 3 and minus 9. But when we define our own class vec3, we can simply omit any mention of less than operator and thus ensure that nobody will ever accidentally misuse it in a mat mathematical context. That's more or less everything that I had to share with you related to the std array. In the next video, I'll probably present the std vector, so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks a lot for watching the video and don't forget to press that like button if you found the video useful. This helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, CPP Dev out.